The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus came down the mountain with Peter, James, and John, and approached the disciples, they saw a large crowd standing around and scribes in lively discussion with them. Immediately on te- and catching sight of Jesus, the whole crowd was overcome with awe. They ran up to greet him. He asked them, what are you discussing among yourselves? Teacher, a man in the crowd replied, I have brought my son to you because he is possessed by a mute spirit. When the word seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. Just now I asked your disciples to expel him, but they were unable to do so. He replied by saying to the crowd, What an unbelieving lot you are. How long must I remain with you? How long can I endure you? Bring him to me. When they did so, the Spirit caught sight of Jesus and immediately threw the boy into convulsion. As he fell to the ground, he began to roll around and foam at the mouth. Then Jesus questioned the father, how long has this been happening to him? From childhood, the father replied, often it throws him into the fire and into water. You would think it would kill him. If out of the kindness of your heart you can do anything to help us, please do. Jesus said, if you can, everything is possible to a man who trusts. The boy's father immediately exclaimed, I do believe, help my lack of trust. Jesus, on seeing a crowd rapidly gathering, reprimanded the unclean spirit by saying to him, Mute and deaf spirit, I command you, get out of him and never enter him again. Shouting and throwing the boy into convulsions, It came out of him. The boy became like a corpse, which caused many to say, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and helped him to his feet. When Jesus arrived at the house, his disciples began to ask him privately, why is it that we could not expel it? He told them, this kind you can drive out only by prayer. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us all be seen. Today is Monday of the seventh week of the year. And Christ again warns us that we are always undergoing tests, the tests of our faith. And so in the gospel for today, we see Christ testing the faith of the man whose son was possessed by the devil. And so we see at the beginning of the gospel that 
his faith was very weak. And immediately the gospel tells us how to improve our faith. And the only way to improve our faith is by prayer. In fact, even the apostles could not drive the devil away from the young man possessed. And Christ immediately <clears throat> reminded them that this kind can only be driven out by prayer. That's the reason why it is so important in our formation that prayer plays a very important part. Prayer is called by Saint Benedict as the divine office or the work of God. It is the most important activity because it is the only way we can drive devils away. So Christ always puts us into a test to see whether our faith is strong or weak. Of course, Christ knows all the time if our faith is strong or weak because he is a God. But we do not know if our faith is weak or strong. So the task that Christ gives us is for our sake. So if we find out our faith is weak, like the Father, we can pray, Lord, increase our faith. And you should. Pray to God to constantly increase our faith until it becomes perfect. In the past Mass, we, can, we heard Christ reminding us to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. Now, the Heavenly Father is perfect <clears throat> in all things. And the first step towards the perfection of the Father is first to be perfect in our faith. Then hopefully, we can be perfect in our charity. Of course, <clears throat> Our perfection can never be as perfect as God the Father, but we can be as perfect as God gives us the grace. And so the gospel for today reminds us that among the tests that God will give us is that he will allow the devil to tempt us. And not only will God allow the devil to tempt us, he will even give him special powers when we are approaching the general judgment day. He will give the devil special powers in testing us. And the reason why Christ will give the devil special powers is because as we approach the general judgment day, we must hurry up in being, being perfect. We cannot die imperfect when we reach the general judgment day because we are told there is no purgatory after the general judgment day. So there is no place for us to be 
perfected in purgatory because there will be no purgatory. And so we have to be perfect before we are judged by Christ. And so the warning is that the devil will be released by God himself. And the devil, of course, his most potent weapon is to possess us. Because the moment he possesses us, you cannot learn anything on how to go to heaven. You cannot learn how to enter the Catholic Church when he has possessed you. You cannot learn the teachings of Jesus Christ. And so unable to learn all these things, we cannot be saved. And so we notice the fact that before Christ would preach, he always would drive the devil away because if we are possessed, even if Christ himself preaches to us, we cannot learn. We cannot understand his teaching. This is what you call spiritual possession of the devil, the way Judas was possessed. This is more serious than physical possession that you see in the movies. Those are only physical possession. Any exorcist, good exorcist, can easily drive the devil if you are only physically possessed but not when you are spiritually possessed. Notice in today's gospel, even the apostles could not drive the devil away. No priests, not even bishops, not even the pope can drive away the devil in a soul that is spiritually possessed. And these days, that is what we notice, <clears throat> that people are spiritually possessed. When a person is physically possessed, you see those manifestations you see in the movie. They rise in the air, they can walk on the wall and even walk on the ceiling or their voice becomes as big and as deep as a man. All those things are just physical possession. In spiritual possession, like Judas, you don't notice anything. They can even be very pleasant. They can be very nice. No ugly or devilish signs. That's precisely what happened to Judas, that the apostles did not even notice that he was possessed. And so we see this young man possessed by the devil, and Christ was the only one who could drive this devil away. Why? Because of the faith of the Father. Or as we saw in the Syrophoenician woman, because of the faith of the mother. The faith of the father and the faith of the mother is what enabled Christ 
to drive the devil from the possessed child. What if your father has no faith? What if your mother has no faith? So even Christ would not be able to drive the devil because remember in the prayer for complain, it is the firm faith of man that drives the devil away. And so therefore, the importance of prayer. Oh, it's so easy to notice someone who is possessed. They don't pray. That's the sign. Or as the story on St. Benedict shows us, every time they go to divine office, they leave the divine office at the middle to do something else. And St. Benedict saw a little devil always bringing out the monk during prayer. So since prayer is what drives the devil away, those who do not pray or those who pray badly are those who are easily possessed. But not ordinary prayer can drive the devil away. The father at the beginning could not drive the devil because his faith was weak. Christ had to increase his faith before the devil was driven away. So in our case, how can we drive the devil away? By improving our prayer of faith. The prayer of faith. Like the prayer of the Syrophoenician woman. Like the prayer of the centurion. Like the prayer of the woman with hemorrhage. Christ described them as people with great faith. How can you find out if your faith is great? The way you pray. If you are distracted during the Psalms, you know the Psalms is just a prayer for beginners. If you do not even say the prayers for beginners properly, you cannot drive the devil away because it has to be the prayer of faith that drives the devil away. And the prayer of faith is the prayer of the New Testament. Praying the Psalms is not enough because that is the prayer of the Old Testament. So what is the prayer of the New Testament? <clears throat> Saint Benedict describes it as the prayer of tears. Did you notice Saint Benedict says that after reciting the divine office, you are encouraged to remain in the oratory to pray. And he precisely said the prayer of tears, which St. Paul described as the prayer of groaning and sighing. It is a prayer without words, without words. So it is a prayer not coming from the intellect, though you have to begin praying with the intellect. 
But then it must begin to be a prayer from the heart. And the heart does not have a language. It has no words. That is why it's called the prayer of tears. No words are used. Let's pretend that you see somebody that you love who passes away. What do you do? You cry. You don't mention any words. You don't say any words. But everybody can hear what you are saying simply by your crying. And your crying for the passing of a loved one is more eloquent than if you say anything in word. So the prayer of tears is the same. St. Paul says it's only groaning and sighing. It is called the prayer of tears because it begins with a prayer of penance in which you shed tears because of sorrow for your past sins. Sadness because of your past sins. You weep with tears just as you cry at the presence of the death of a loved one. No words are uttered, only sighing, groaning, and tears. That is a prayer of faith that drives away devil. And we live in an age where practically everybody are possessed by the devil, and they don't know it. Judas himself did not know it. The apostles themselves did not know it. Only those with the perfect prayer of faith can know if someone is spiritually possessed and at the same time can drive the devil away. So, like the father of the man possessed by the devil, our prayer should be, Lord, increase our faith every day. Increase our faith. Increase our faith because if your faith is strong to the point that you have reached the prayer of tears, the devil cannot possess you. And if you ever see someone possessed by the devil, you, with the help of Christ, can very easily drive the devil away. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit,